the one thing that I really truly believe now with Shohei though is we all thought Mike Trout was that, right? We thought he was this the, the greatest baseball. There were people that said he was already the greatest baseball player that ever lived. And you think someone's the main character in a story, but that was the twist is that we all watched Mike Trout and then he signed that contract extension and now he's hurt again and it's starting to look like hey, maybe this is never going to happen. And Shohei gets to look at him and say, this is why you don't sign with the Angels. Is that <laughs> Mike Trout could walk into any grocery store in Canada today and maybe one person would recognize him. You know, someone would look twice and go, I think I know him. Are, are you an actor from Head & Shoulders commercials? Like, <laughs> right. like, that's it. And he never played a postseason moment. And yeah, he'll be in a multi-multi-millionaire. That's fine. But yeah, uh, I hope Shohei wants more. I think he wants the legacy. I've said this, and a lot of people disagree. I would rather have him be a Yankee or a Red Sox so I got to see him more often and be in a relevant market than I would have him stay with the Angels, like unquestionably for me. What about a Cub? <laughs> what <laughs> yeah. about a compromise? No, I, you no. know? <laughs> I love you Man, I just want to... I. I want to be able to go down to the ballpark and see that guy yes. all the time. Oh, and it'd be, I know, it'd be cool. It'd be great. I know yeah. he's not going to be a Blue Jay. And yeah, basically, I don't know if you heard any of my lead up today. I went, ah, right. It's like <laughs> Blue Jays. I said, this is the way that I'm framing them right now. It's obviously they're a good team, but it's just, it's everyone's a little bit disappointed right now. And there's like some fan shaming that's happening because people scold fans and go, well, the team is good and the same record as a year from now. And it's like, yes, for sure. They're fine. But there's nothing really special about the Blue Jays outside of, I right. would say, Bo Bichette. There's not like a special unit. They don't have a special offense. They don't have a special pitching staff. They don't have a special right. bullpen. It's all just good and fine. And the most frustrating part is that the Orioles and the Rays have jumped them as the team of the next five years kind of thing that the Blue Jays had in their back pocket of, hey, we're developing towards being that something special. And there's these other two teams that have done it. And so I, I guess I'll put it to you this way is, if the Jays have a chance at having something special in the second half, what do you think it is? Like how far do I think they can, or, or what, no, no, uh, what trait is Yes, it, yes. What's the trait about the team that you think yeah. has, le like they've left the most on the table and that they, they have the highest ceiling where we're going to look at the second half and go, okay, you know what? This is the defining characteristic of the team. Because frankly, like right now, I don't really yeah. know what it is. Uh, it's a good question. I, I, so I'll give you kind of a silly answer. I think it's just wins. And, and how do they win those games, which I know is what you're asking. I, I think if they're going to have a defining characteristic, it'll be playing, here's a very vague fa uh, phrase that I'll try to explain. It'll be playing winning baseball. It'll be one day the bullpen comes in and gives you great innings like they did on Sunday in Detroit. Then the next day, Kiermaier makes a great catch and that helps them win. And then the next day, um, you know, Merrifield and Varsha will pull off a double steal at a key. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. winning, winning baseball, because that's what they were. To that's what they told us they were going yes. to be in the spring. Right. So yeah. I don't think they're going to be overwhelming in any area, be it starting pitching, relief pitching, offense. The defense is very good. Like the defense undeniably is very, very good this year, but but um, I, I think it'll just be playing winning baseball, winning a lot of close games. You know, one day somebody pushes a bunt to bring in the winning run. One day somebody hits a homer. Like, you do it, you find ways to win. Like those Giants teams did when they were winning the World Series. They weren't the most talented teams. And this team is talented. It's really funny, because, and I know you know this, and, and I'm not being an apologist at all. I'm the, I'm the first to say it's been a little underwhelming. You expected a little bit more. They have a better record in a harder division than they had either of the last two years. Mm -hmm. And it's underwhelming. You know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit of a, it's, it's a bit confusing right now. 2021, they did have those overwhelming. They had Vladdy, they had Simeon, they had Robbie Ray. Yeah. Uh, the offense was a monster, but the bullpen was a disaster for half of the season. It really was the first mm -hmm. half of the season. The bullpen was a disaster. So they were a, you know, we were talking Simeon and Ray and Vladdy and Teo, and, and, and they were monsters in some ways. Fun but they too. didn't win enough games. But, pardon me? Fun, too. You know, fun those are too. fun guys super to fun. talk about. Super fun. Super fun. Yes. Um, winning is fun, too, I yeah. think. So, you know, <laughs> winning is uh, very fun. I agree. Winning is very fun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, but, um, uh, uh, you know, they were different. They had, they had stronger strengths, but bigger weaknesses in 2021 this year, everything is kind of pushed in towards the center a little bit, I guess. Yeah. But, um, I do think there's upside there, 
but I'm not one of these people who says, well, it's automatically going to normalize. And they're like, you got to play better. You got to yeah. do it. Right. So, um, if, and, and there, here comes some ifs, you know, can Vladdy be a little bit better? Can Varsho be a little bit better? Can uh, Kirk be a little bit better? I don't know the answer to any of those three. And then on the pitching side, um, can Manoa just keep them in games? Yeah. Cause that's better than what they got in the first half. And then you've got Hyunjin Ryu and Chad Green hopefully coming, which which really uh, rounds out your pitching staff. It may not raise the ceiling, but it certainly raises the floor because you know now you just got more depth, more options. Um, let's assume Romano's okay; that it's just a minor thing, right? Because that's a whole different conversation. But I, I do think there's upside here, but you got to go out and um, and and show it on the field. They're they're fortunate that neither the Astros nor the Yankees took off. Yep. in the first half. They're really fortunate. Uh, don't look now. The Red Sox are in this thing, too. Uh, so well, yeah, that was be... apparent when they beat the brakes yeah. off the Jays in a series, yes. and then you looked at the standings and went, wait, they just yes. caught you. That sucked. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, beat the you Red Sox game. are only two games back of the Blue Jays right now, and obviously, uh, like, forget about the tiebreaker. It is mathematically impossible for them to win the tiebreaker with the Red Sox yep. right now, but they've they've just got to, you know, when they play the they don't play the Yankees until the end of September, but when they play the Red Sox, play the Yankees, play the Orioles, they got to do better. Like it's playing, they just got to do better if they want to yeah. if they want to be in this thing. No, you know what though? I love that answer. That's that's so true because I I think part. So there have been a couple of things. It's not always one thing, right? That make a season frustrating. Because you're right. Everyone does know that the team is good. It, it, it's just it's really hard to argue. And the way you framed it as they've moved to the center is definitely a proper one, right? There's no disastrous area of the baseball team minus runners in scoring position, which. You know, that that has obviously been by far the worst one, but you have to expect mm-hmm. some regression there to a certain degree. My God, it, it cannot... You can't have a top 10 OPS and WRC plus and then be, what, 23rd and hit scoring runners in scoring position? It just right. it, it just can't happen this way. I have to believe that something will change. Something, please, for the love of God, because I can't, I can't, Dan. <laughs> I can't do another half season where it's like that. Believe me, I've said it yeah. more than you've heard it. I know. So. <laughs> oh, I, well, yeah, I watch every game and you're there. Yeah. <laughs> I hear your voice. Uh, anyway, I, I agree. I think that we were told that this team was going to be a mature baseball team and that they weren't going to have outs on the base pass and they weren't going to be, you know, absent-minded at times. And we've, we've still seen that, despite the outfield defense, I would say, being basically spectacular on any given night. They're just, they're, there does feel like bad at-bats and those mistakes on the bases. It just, it's been there. It's, it's been with this team for some stretches of the year. So I think if they, if they were able to do what you're saying, where they're a gutsy team and they just find ways to win, but nothing is special other than that quality... I do believe people would turn a bit and go, no, no, no. These guys are these guys are tough. These guys have an attitude. They have a swagger to them, and that's been one of the things that's been sort of missing with the Blue Jays this year. Is in years past when you were referencing those other guys like Tay Oscar and Lourdes leaving, people still wanted that more maturity. But now it's like the fun of those guys right. is gone, but the maturity hasn't fully arrived, and and that has been kind of tough to swallow. Yeah, no, I get that, and and I, I think you've got to break it down into specific areas, and, and the base running is certainly one area where it should have been better than it is. At times, yeah. it's been great and opportunistic, and Varsho's and amazing at it. I love watching Varsho's him. amazing at it, yeah. and and I know he's not hitting. I, I need to say Varsho's defense and Varsho's base running oh. are so unbelievably good. Just get on and base there's though. value there. Just get on base though, because it's so beautiful right. when you get there. I just need to see it more often. Right. Here's the problem. You can look at his offense, his hitting numbers. You can look at his numbers. How many people are actually, you know, looking at base running metrics and defensive metrics? And not me. But there's, there, right? There's value there, and and yeah. um, I feel for the guy. Like he gets traded for one very popular player and one very highly thought of prospect. Mm-hmm. The popular guy goes to the All Star game and is playing rock paper scissors with Vladdy across the field. Like, hurts. Uh, you, you know, all Varsha wants to do is show the fans and show his teammates yeah. he's a good player, and he is a good player, and he'll be a good player. But I, I feel for him. It's a, I, I think it's been a tough first half, and maybe he's felt some pressure. I know he puts pressure on himself. I mean, he's told me that. So, um, but the, the, so the, yeah, he's a phenomenal base runner. Kiermaier is a phenomenal base runner. Um, Merrifield's been great with a couple of exceptions where he's been too aggressive. Um, you know, Vladdy's run into some outs he shouldn't have because Vladdy gets very excited out there on the bases. So, but, um, overall the base running has been better than it was, but not as good as it should be in my opinion. 
The defense has been great. Uh, outfield defense is great. Bo is much, much better. Like, how often do you talk about Agree. Bo's defense on no, your show? No, totally right? agree. And, no, and it's no, probably the most right. underrated, like, positive Blue Jay story of the season. Yes. Yeah. Yes. His, his defense has been just fine, maybe a little bit better than just fine. Like, it certainly hasn't been the story. Nobody has said in months they got to move him to second base. Nobody has said that because uh, it's, not a, it's not a story anymore. So the defense has been very good. The, running, the scoring position thing obviously has been the big talking point. It's funny, on the road trip, I remember looking at the beginning of the road trip, it was like 237 or something. I just look now, it's 246. Like, you can have a you can have a nine for fifteen kind of day, and you know, and but you win the game twelve to two, right? So mm-hmm. even runners in scoring position can be a little bit misleading. Like sure. better is like low leverage, medium leverage, high leverage, you know, that kind of stuff. Those are actually more meaningful, but that's a little more subtle, I guess, for for some of the viewing audience. But they they do have to hit more in key spots, what mm-hmm. whatever that means. And uh, God bless Danny Jansen for doing what he did on Sunday because. Mm-hmm. Um, I think even our conversation, honestly, J.D. would have a different vibe if they'd lost that game on Sunday. And if they make the playoffs by one game, that's the one I think that I'm going to be looking at to say they did it. But, um, you know, they all know it's not like they're running away from the idea that they need to be better and they should be better than they've been. I, I, they know that. Um, they just, but, but again, it just you got to go out and do it on the field because at the end of the day, your record is what, what it says it is, right? Well, wasn't it against the Tigers, the game where Simeon threw the ball away? Yes, two yeah. years ago, yes. So there you yeah. go. Maybe that's the thing. You know, right. he, it's yeah. the Tigers. It's the Tigers swing, the one-game Tigers swing yeah. where you steal one versus you blow one that puts you in the playoffs. And, yeah, that's yeah. – hey, again, though, that's sort of what you were talking about where it's a clutch at bat from a player that has come through in those spots. And you go, okay, that is uh, – that's a gritty way to win. You sucked all game. That game was horrible. That was, mm-hmm. a, that was a dreadful afternoon for me. I actually – you know, where you're talking about shifting the narratives, I – I t- really try to wait with tweets for later in games, not just fourth inning blast. Right, where I get right. pissed. And thank God in that game, because there's like if four or five in my drafts that were bad, <laughs> you know, that were bad. And they, you're right. They definitely, definitely, definitely needed that game. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the Varsho thing is super interesting to me in terms of what happens second half. Cause I do feel like he's just an important bat, a guy when it comes to these at bats, a guy that if they can put him on base, he scores. I think it was in the tigers game or one of the ones in the series where he got on first and he scored on the hit, like from first base. What game was that? He scored. Yeah, no, it was the, um, White Sox? He scored from first. He read there was it was extra innings. Yeah, it was the, it was extra the tenth game. inning. It was the yeah. tenth inning on Sunday. Yes. Kirk was the runner at second. Yes. Varsho hit a ground ball to the right side. They threw Kirk out at third. Yeah. Varsho was at first on the fielder's choice, uh, yeah. and then Lucas doubled and Varsho scored. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, I just love watching him on the bases though because I go, how did you ever even become a baseball player? I would have thought that. When you were in high school, some football coach would have gone, you're not doing that. Like, yeah. come over here. You're going to hold on to this ball and lower your head and go forward. And then bigger guys are going to hit you. And it will suck sometimes, but you're going to be a right. good running back. Like, you don't normally see guys that have his sort of body type and his running style in baseball. Yeah. And that's why I just wish he would get on more. And I think that he's a key yep. cog. But the, the part of him, though, too, is the same thing with Belt and the adjustments that this team made this season is that they went and said, we're going to get more left-handed. We're going to get more left-handed. We're going to get more left-handed bats here. It's going to be good. And the offense has been mostly fine, except for when you look at them versus left-handed pitching. And my favorite thing to do is bet the under on the Blue Jays when they face a lefty. It's the easiest lock that you can basically Smart. ever have yeah. is to go, yeah. oh, yeah, under under tonight. I don't care if this lefty stinks. I don't care if he's soft tossing hard. Like, doesn't matter. They're not going to hit him. And it feels kind of urgent that they need that righty bat. It's also part of what makes the Guriel slash uh, – Tay Oscar trades look especially weird is that those guys would just be so perfect as the other DH. But yeah, how, how desperate do you think that they get here in terms of at least trying to add somebody relatively soon so that no offense to Lucas and uh, Ernie Clement that they, yep. yeah, that they have another bat that can at least come off the bench or DH from them from the right side. Yeah. Well, first thing on Varsha really quickly, he was a yeah. safety in high school and okay, well, um, he should have kept he- doing that. What, well, he no hands. He just couldn't get in here. Says he's afraid of contact. Like he runs in the wall. Fine. No, I don't know. He told me 
that he and, and he didn't uh, he didn't like being in coverage. He liked like just running up and trying to find the running back and hitting yeah. him or hit or huh. hit the quarterback. So. I, I'm so mad yeah. you told me this. I, he better have highlights. I want to see him. Like he runs hard. I want to see him light up some high school kid because he's yeah. just a bowling ball. That's what I mean. I want to love our show, Dan, so badly. Like I'm you right should. there. I want to love him. I want to, but. Then I, again, watch Gurriel hit grand slams and I see Varsho yeah, strike out with one out and a guy on third and I'm just mad. So it's hard. Yeah, I know. It's hard. Do you, um, did I ever tell you my opening conversation with him when I met him in spring training? Um, maybe you did, but remind me because... So he's from, Wisconsin. he's from Wisconsin. Oh yeah, so you guys talk Packers, right? I That's, walked up to him yeah. and I, I stuck my hand out and I yeah, said, hey, so, Dalton, I'm Dan, I'm Dan yeah. Shulman, I'm a Packers he fan. He and, he said, and he said, I know. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it. That's, I love that. We're good. Yeah. yeah. No, you um, have to love our yeah. show. He comes, he's uh, like, I know that about you immediately. Huge yeah. crush. <laughs> like 10 yes, out of 10. Exactly. If yeah. you have any self-respect and someone does that to you, you're like, yeah, I root for you till the day I die. I will, yes. I yeah. will fight for you. <laughs> yeah. um, in terms of trade deadline, I'm with you. Uh, right-handed bat with some thump. I, I think that's what they need. Like they're at the point now, and they don't see many lefties, right? But even in yeah. a game – where you see um, uh, a righty, you might have a lefty come in to face a Varsha or a Kiermaier or a Belt or whatever. It just lights even up. It, even if it's just somebody coming off the bench, or if it's platooning, like they're at the point now, most of the time, almost, well, all the time, really, when a lefty starts against them, Merrifield's in left and Espinal's at second, and mm-hmm. one of Varsha or Kiermaier isn't playing, so you've got that guy on the bench. But they just need, I, I'm with you, I, I think preferably right-handed hitting, preferably an outfielder, and preferably with power. Like a veteran guy who can come off the bench and say, uh, you, you know, almost like last year of his career, Albert Pujols, you know what I mean? I'm not an outfielder, obviously, but you know what I mean. Like, like just somebody who understands the assignment. What's the assignment? I come off the bench in a big spot, and I'm a threat. Just be a threat. So, um I don't think they're going out and trading for an all-star caliber anything, uh, hitter or pitcher. I, I, no. I think the vast, vast majority of this has to come from within, and from within I'm including Ryu and Green on, yeah. on the pitching side. But they do need, um, they do need more on their bench. And, and, and if you go get a guy like that, it gives you a little bit of insurance against injury too because they've been pretty lucky um, on, on the injury side. I mean, I'm still curious – they got two guys in AAA who have always intrigued me, or not always intrigued, who intrigue me in Spencer Horwitz and David Schneider. I want to know what they are. Like, like I, I'm curious about David Schneider. Everybody I know loves David Schneider. Now, he might, you know, everybody says, well, the, the, he keeps surprising us. He keeps going up, and he keeps pushing, and he keeps surprising us. And, and, you know, I don't know if you want to inject that kind of a guy into a pennant race as a you know a guy who's never played in the big leagues before. But they need something that mm-hmm. they – that they don't have, but but even if they get that guy, JD, that doesn't mean the other guys don't need to do more. The nine guy or the thirteen guys they've got, and they again they know this. They all they've all got to do a little bit more, and and even if it, each of them just does five to ten percent more, that's or is a little bit more opportunistic in, in high leverage situations. That helps too. I, I mean, I, I'm really curious about the next couple of weeks. They're playing. Uh, they're not in their division at all, as you know. They're playing. Mm-hmm. You know, Arizona, San Diego, the Dodgers, like teams you don't know. You know, how do you stack up? What are they, 41 and 20 outside the division or something mm-hmm. like something Dominant. like that, right? Or 40, yeah. 42 and 21, whatever it is. They're so good at so, that. Yeah, they should They should refuse to play games within their own division. So I, I'm sure they got five series in a row against Western teams, three NL, two AL. And, and it'll be fun to see how they stack up. But there's so many things. Like, how does Manoa do in his second start? Yeah. Is is Swanson recharged coming out of the break? You know, there there are a lot, a lot of things about this team that could that are important. And I, I think it's got to even you know, Vladdy going nuts would be great. But I think if they're going to win this, getting back to your your question a few minutes ago, I think this is a this is a team thing. They've all just got to do a little bit better. I completely agree. I do think Vladdy, like if we we're doing the what makes the team special conversation, like kind of looping back to that. To me, it's two of those things you just touched on, though, which is. Hey, can Manoa find it again? And if Ryu gets back and you can go to a six man rotation, does that extra day of rest start to get everyone looking nastier? You know, does all of a sudden Bassett get to not feel as much strain on it? The only guy that I think would really, really, really not want to screw with this is Barrios because he's just like, no, whatever we're doing for me is working incredibly well. Let me keep doing it. 
But for all the other guys, I feel like six-man rotation, if you could find a way to get two of your starters, maybe three, and Manoa being in the mix for that, to be scary playoff guys again? Because that mm-hmm. was it last year. Remember with the Mariners? It was, well, you got to beat Gossman and Manoa. You're not doing that. Yeah. And then they did because, yeah, bullpen. But either way, if you can get back to that, that, that feels like it. Do you go to six-man rotation? Like... Because I think you and Siddle were talking about on the broadcast, and he was saying two to three more starts before they have a serious conversation about him coming up, right? Well, this this is just, forget it's Ryu. Think you know it's yeah. Johnny Generic coming off of uh, you know injury. He's done three innings and he's done four innings. So yeah. if you just kind of if he keeps if he does five and six, now his four innings were thirty seven pitches because he's yeah. John Ryu and it was an A ball. But yeah. um, so let's say three more. You know he did thirty seven pitches. Can you get him to fifty to sixty five to eighty? You know, if you can do that, you're you're four starts away, three weeks away, maybe something like that. I don't know that they go to a six man or maybe they do it selectively. Like maybe if you have, you know, fourteen games in fourteen days, you roll a six man a couple of times through, but then when you get the off day, you you go back to a five man. Like yeah. if you've got a six man and an off day, now Kevin Gosman's only pitching once a week, and you want to, yeah, you need no. to win games, uh-huh. you know. So I, I could see them doing it selectively. The you know the next level question is well then if they if it's not six who's not in there? But uh, you know as you know baseball has a way of sorting these things out. So um, but uh, it, it's a good problem to have if if everybody they have is pitching well mm-hmm. and Ryu is healthy and pitching well. That's a good problem to have, but there are a couple of ifs that have to be overcome before they get there. By the way, uh, this is the last one because I'm really trying to push them when we're talking about the right-handed bat thing. Do you think that there would be anything that could ingratiate the front office and inject life back into the team, though, than going back and saying, we're bringing back Teo? <laughs> um, I feel like that's just such a huge win at this point. You get some fun back in the team. He knows yeah. he's not playing outfield defense every day. He's your DH on the right side. You find him sometimes where he plays outfield, maybe. Um, but yeah, now you have that right-handed power bat back in your lineup, and all of a sudden things start to just look a little bit better. Now you can finally put Chapman back down because it's at the point now where, yeah, it just he, him being where he is in the lineup every single time is just pain. It's just it's pure, pure, unadulterated pain. And yeah, all of a sudden you throw Teo there with the righty. I just, yeah, I just, I, I like it. I love how the team looks with Oscar Hernandez. So he's your cleanup hitter against lefties, yeah. and he plays some time against righties. Yeah. So because he's not having for people who don't no. know, and I haven't looked in a while, he's his not last having a month great is, year. No, but his last month, I think he OPS uh, like nine fifty ish oh, range. Okay. No, okay. he's he's yeah. turned into Teo again. My theory is that. He went to Seattle and he missed Toronto so much. He was sad and he was in like, you've been to Seattle. I love Seattle, but it's gloomy. You know, he's like, he's a happy guy. He's in the yeah. gloom factory. That is Seattle. He's upset that Toronto after all the hard work, didn't want to give him a big bag of money. And he goes there and yeah. And he's, he was sad. <laughs> and Now he's fine. You know, fans now, would go nuts. Yeah, fans would go that's nuts. what I'm saying. He's just a, yeah. so to me, it's either yeah. you go sort of splash. That's the splashiest thing you could possibly do because I don't know. You're right. He didn't have the biggest year, although he will be in demand. Or you do the right-handed bat thing immediately, kind of like they did with Simber and Richards trade, where they yeah. jumped the market, yeah. and you just say, "Listen, we're not going to be spectacular with this, but then we're jumping the market. And we're doing this early because we do need it. Like you, you need to. I, I'm sure Davis Schneider is going to be good." But I, I, I want this team to win a World Series this year. No, this I'm with you. That's why you, you need a veteran at yeah, this point. Go, you, go get a professional. Yeah. You know, go get a professional yeah. who takes professional at bats. You know, the funny thing is, back in the day, there were professional veteran pinch hitters. That was a thing. Yeah, those guys stairs. don't really. You're right. Those guys don't really exist anymore. I mean, part of it is that the National League doesn't have pitchers hitting anymore. Yeah. Every National League team had dudes coming off the bench. Yeah, like absolute dudes. And and. Yeah, the Matt Matt Stairs, those guys are extinct right now, basically. So, um, but I would love to see them get somebody. I mean, Teo, yeah, I I, I guess. I don't think it's a great, I I mean, it's an interesting fit. I Mm -hmm. think I want somebody who grinds out at bats and gets on base at a higher clip a little bit more, um, a little bit less of the all or nothing, Mm because this team can be all or nothing sometimes. So. Um, fans would go nuts. That that that's obvious. But in terms of jumping the market, I I don't think it's that early anymore. Like the draft has happened. What's today? The twelfth. Uh, yeah, and, today's the twelfth. You know, 
I Way to go. Deadline. You're off and you Thank know the you. day. That's yeah. actually really <laughs> impressive. Thank I you. would have zero shot Thank at that. You. If I can get within two, I'm like, nice. That was pretty good. You yeah. know, that's it. So way to go. I'm, Vacation day yeah. knows the day. I know. I'm well, and I'm 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 usually I'm decent at day of the week, day of the month. I'm oh, usually yeah. a disaster at so, but <laughs> um, but it's we're we're less than three weeks from the deadline, right? Yeah. So it, um, Simber was a June guy, I think. Yeah. So I think the time if you're going to do it, do it. But obviously that means you know teams are going to try to get a little bit more out of you if you're mm. if you're getting more at bats out of them. But yeah, it would be it would be nice to make a preemptive strike. It, it would give everybody in the in the clubhouse a little uh, emotional boost yeah. too. They 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 just need a threat. Uh, whether you say off the bench, part time, platoon, however you want to say it, you know what I mean. Yeah. They need one more. They need one more threat somewhere in that lineup. I think so. they they desperately do. I like yeah. again. All due respect to Ernie Clement, and that was a great moment for Nathan Lucas. But we'd been waiting all year for that, and finally yep. he got one. Like we're over yep. the midway mark, and there's one moment for this guy who's been with the baseball team since the beginning. And I know back and forth, whatever, but it's just, yeah, it's time for a vet. And that, I think that's actually the biggest flaw in my Teoscar theory is uh, you're bringing a guy in who you want to be basically a platoon player who's trying to get a big bag of money. And right. yeah, I don't, I don't know if he would just happily sit there on the bench and go like, yeah, sure. I'll play once every, you know, I'll play half the games down the stretch. I don't know. It just doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't feel right to me. Anyways. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll take a 34-year-old guy who knows his sure. role and wants to win. Give me that's, right-handed that's Brandon Belt. That's all. Honestly, like, give me a guy that yeah. grinds out at bats, takes walks, just does it from the the, the other side of the plate, right? Like, yeah. that's it. Just give yeah. me one more professional. That's the thing about Belt I love. But it scares me a bit that a 35-year-old guy who was banged up for a while is such a key cog of, like, making the offense look different, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, a guy mm-hmm. that does it differently at the plate. So to me, yeah, I think if you're the Jays, you definitely want to add one more guy that does those at bats. You're, that, that again, you you nailed it with the Tay Oscar thing, the all or nothing stuff. I I want another guy who draws walks and you just is a pain in the ass at the plate, where you go, okay, man, uh, there's two outs. You think you're mowing through this game, and all of a sudden this guy's going to come up and he's going to make that pitcher work. Get, go get that yep. guy, find that guy, identify that player. The team desperately, desperately need it, and and I think that it would have an effect around the rest of the roster. Like I, I really do. I have to believe it because, again, some of these at-bats have been dreadful. So, um, please, get another yeah. guy who's a little bit more productive. <laughs> for um, your emotional well-being, please. Yeah, man, yeah. for yours, yeah. too. This, you got to watch all these games. It's harder for you because you got to be in the booth. And you do, I think, I've always told you this. I, like, I really love your calls because it, it really hits a lot of the emotional tenor of the game, but you can't do what I do on the couch, which is swear and be like, oh, there, you know, no, like that, no. that, that bar show <laughs> bat I'm talking about where I'm, I turn the TV off for five minutes and go walk into the other room and be like, I hate this team. Like you can't do that. So for no, your health too. No. <laughs> Anyways, Dan, thanks for doing this, especially during the break, man. I really do appreciate it. You got it. Take All care, right. Man. Be well. Yeah. Dan Shulman. There he goes.